Hello, and welcome to another episode of Now About That with James and Sarah. I'm James. And I'm Sarah. And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about extraterrestrials. Aliens, Marge. I'm talking aliens. (laughs) (laughs) Sarah wanted to talk about aliens, so I looked up some information. But Sarah, do you have something specific you want to talk about first? I don't have anything specific, no. I just I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go through this 24 fascinating facts about UFOs from Mental Floss real quick first. Okay. And then we'll jump into your thoughts. Um, so the first, or the term UFO was first utilized in the 1950s in reference to reports from the U.S. Air Force. And it stands for Unidentified Flying Objects. Um, and then there is also another term that's not listed here, but we'll get to that later. Whenever, oh, wait. Yeah, it's right here. Most recent government reports use the term UAP, among other abbreviations. And UAP stands for Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. Hmm. Okay. I just heard about that because we watched that movie, Nope, and they were talking about it in that movie. Um, the term UFO doesn't refer to aliens, just flying objects. So just because we call something a UFO doesn't necessarily mean there are aliens involved. Although, of course, the two terms are associated in the public consciousness. Um, And then Foo Fighters took their name from an old term referring to UFO-like objects. I didn't know this. I didn't know that either. In World War II, they would refer to Foo Fighters the the night fighter squadron used the term foo fighters when they described weird annoying falls of light they spotted in the air over germany okay there you go so foo fighters that's what they were called which is trivia later (laughs) (laughs) um a mosquitoed pilot brought the term flying saucer into the public eye oh misquoted sorry misquoted uh the phrase flying saucer has a pretty fascinating history it seems to have gotten big break after an incident that occurred on june 24th 1947 Pilot Kenneth Arnold was flying near Mount Rainier, um, looking for plane wreckage when he spotted nine metallic objects in the sky. They were huge. Arnold estimated they were each around the size of a DC-4 plane and moving around 1,200 miles per hour. He thought they were military planes and reported them, at which point the press misquoted him as saying they were flying saucers. Hmm. The One of the only phrases I know in French is how to say, I am a flying saucer. Why? Because my mother taught it to me because my mother is my mother. And what is it? How do you say it? Je suis un souffle Okay. I'm a flying saucer. Uh, Life magazine once wrote about UFOs. So in an April 1952 article, they featured 10 UFO cases. And the opinion of one scientist quoted in the article have an outworld, out-of-world basis. Uh, UFO, UFOs have been written about for centuries. Um, Some ancient UFOs have natural explanations. In the classical classical journal paper, Struthers focused on the ancient Romans who wrote about strange things in the sky all the time. Some of them can definitely be explained as natural phenomena like ellipses or meteor showers. Others, not so much. Other ancient UFO sightings are harder to explain. In 74 BCE, thousands of people witnessed a strange event in which a Utrarch, sure, uh, wrote around 150 years later a huge flame like body, silver in the collar and shaped like a wine jar, interrupted two warring armies. Pliny the Elder wrote that a spark was seen to fall from the sky and around and grow as it approached the earth. It eventually became a lar- as large as the moon before going back into the sky. It sounds like a, a meteor that came into the earth's atmosphere but didn't hit land to me. Yeah, but except for the going back into the sky part. Well, if it just goes through the atmosphere, I guess that, that just means it could have flown through the sky. Right, but it would have been stuck in Earth's orbit. Not necessarily if it was going fast enough. I don't feel like it would have gotten stuck in Earth's orbit to enter the atmosphere if it was just going to dip right back out. That's not usually how it works. I mean... Because gravity takes over after a certain point. Meh. Uh, an apparent UFO battle was reported in the 19- in the 16th century Europe. 
Um, things don't get any less weird when you fast forward to 1560s when people living in Germany and Switzerland reported seeing strangely shaped objects doing aerial battle and flying around. That's cool. Uh, people in America reported reporting UFOs, UFO sightings as early as the 17th century. The first written record of the UFO in what eventually became the United States came comes from 1630, when some men who were out at on Boston's Muddy River at night reported seeing a light in the sky. Um, the U.S. Air Force began investigating UFOs after World War II, and sightings of weird things in the sky spiked and the government responded by having the U.S. Air Force investigate the incidents. Hmm. The most famous UFO incident of all times occurred near Roswell, New Mexico in the summer of, 19, in the summer of 1947. Um, the rancher who discovered the debris said it was bright wreckage made up of rubber strips, tin foil, and rather tough paper and sticks. Okay. Well, alrighty then. Uh, the Roswell incident sent the country into UFO mania. <clears throat> the statement made news around the century, even as the army was backpedaling, as Dick Pierce at the San Francisco Examiner reported on July 9th, 1947, he called General George Ramey at the base in Fort Worth, Texas, um, who described the disc and noted his belief that it was a piece of a weather balloon, saying, there's no such gadget as the disc known to the army, at least this far down the line. Uh, 13. Mm -hmm. The debris in Roswell is most likely from a government spying operation. Project Blue Book standardized questions to collect UFO data. So to handle UFO sightings, Project Blue Book, which was named after those little blue books students took college exams in, asked people to fill out standardized questions including when did you see the object? Where were you when you saw the object? What was the condition of the sky? And if there was more than just one object, then how many were there? UFO spotters were also asked to draw what they had seen, describe it, describe what it sounded like, and then note if its edges were fuzzy, bright, or sharply outlined. Hmm. <clears throat> the White House has had one close encounter not long before midnight, July 19th. 1952 seven weird blips appeared on the radar of washington national airport leading the man in the air traffic control tower to crack a joke about a flying or a fleet of flying saucers soon air traffic controllers at andrews air force were or air force base were close were also seeing strange blips moving in incredibly high speeds on their screens but no one was laughing when those crafts, whatever they were, flew by the Capitol building at the White House. Oh, and the White House. Hmm. The incident was officially blamed on temperature in inversion, an event in which, simplistically speaking, a layer of warm air traps cooler air beneath it. Radar signals bounce off the layer of, and it appears to show objects that are actually near the ground in the sky. Uh, Betty and Barney Hill claimed they were abducted by a UFO. <gasps> <coughs> Excuse me. Betty worked in child welfare, welfare and Barney at the post office. And in 19, September 1961, they spontaneously decided to take a vacation to give themselves a little R&R. &R. They took a three-day trip driving from their home in New Hampshire to Niagara Falls and Montreal. On the way back, they were driving on dark, empty roads of New Hampshire's White Mountains when they spotted a light in the sky moving strangely it moved upward instead of falling like a shooting star would it got bigger and bigger and eventually seemed to keep keep tracking their car as they drove uh, when they looked at it through binoculars they could see that it was spinning it was a spinning object uh, they kept driving but eventually barney had 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 enough he got out to confront the craft and saw grayish aliens inside with huge eyes. He felt like they were going to be abducted, so he ran back to the car and hit the gas. As they continued to drive, the hills encountered some some kind of roadblock and a fiery orb and passed out. When they woke up a couple hours later, they were 35 miles away from where they'd been with zero memory of how they'd gotten there. Their clothes and shoes were must. Must? M-U-S-S-E-D? I don't know what that means. Mussied? Mussied? I don't know. Moving on. And their watches weren't working. 
Uh, there were strange metal marks on the trunk of their car, and that made compasses go wild. Interesting. There are many, many things that can be mistaken for UFOs. Venus, for example, is a prime culprit behind many supposed UFO sightings, probably because it's so bright and so close to the horizon. SpaceX rocket launch launches have been mistaken for UFOs and has an army parachute team. Oh, and so has an army parachute team. Hmm. Uh, and then 20, a report released in 2021 detailed UFO-related stories from government employees the report released the unidentified aerial phenomena task air Fo or task force or uaptf focused on 144 eyewitness reports of uaps reported by government employees which occurred between 20 or 2004 and 2021 only one of one of the UAPs was properly identified. One of those 144 cases, the report identified just one with confidence. It was believed to be a very big balloon that was deflating. The rest remain un unidentified. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and then a few interesting patterns emerged with the UAPTF reports. Uh, there were themes that emerged in the eyewitness accounts, including things like size, shape, and propulsion. Uh, there was also the fact that sightings often occurred around U.S. military testing grounds, but the reports note that that might be because a large of the large number of high-quality sensors in those locations, and because aviators there are both more focused and encouraged to report anomalies. Uh, the UA. PTF believes most of these incidents can be easily categor categorized. Uh, does this mean aliens? Of course not, according to the task force. In fact, they think many of them will fall into the new explanation. Explainable categories, airborne clutter, things like um, the aforementioned balloon, birds or drones, natural atmospheric phenomena, things like moisture, ice crystals, uh, USG or industrial and in industry, industry development programs um, or foreign adversary systems so crafted deployed uh, and deployed by the likes of Russia or China and then the last one is reports of UFOs will continue to be collected for the foreseeable future we don't have an explanation for these sites yet sightings yet but unfortunately it may stay that way thanks to things like insufficient data and limited reporting well, there you go hmm. so there are 24 facts about UFOs interesting so what are your thoughts on extraterrestrials, Sarah? Well, first of all, I think it's, what's the word? Um, Ignorant? No, I think it's self-absorbed to think that we are the only beings that exist in the universe when there's so much universe out there that like we don't even have explored yet like beyond our galaxy there you know there's tons of stuff out there beyond what we know so i think it makes sense to believe that there are aliens out there now where it gets a little hazy for me is whether or not they would come here because personally i don't really see a reason for them to come to earth where like if they're if they're that advanced that they can travel that far like why the fuck are you coming here <laughs> yeah um i don't know i think if if they were to come or if anything they would probably just like mask themselves and watch from afar to see just study right if anything but i feel i do feel like there have been a few credible um instances where people have encountered potentially alien life forms but like okay. i don't i don't know it can if it much in the same way that i feel about uh the christian god i feel like there's the possibility of existence but whether or not um there's any interest in us is a completely different story <laughs> okay so like so like i believe that there that there are higher powers out there obviously because like i worship deities like whether or not they actually care about our lives enough to be actively out here trying to trying to do stuff like people say that the christian god does i i'm just like i don't know about that i don't know if they're that interested in the in the outcomes of the entirety of humanity to be there but 
Um, I was reading this article from the Scientific American um, about an interview with Avi Loeb, who is an astrobiologist, I think is what it said, um, astrophysicist working at Harvard University. And he says that aliens are a thing and that they have visited us like briefly. I'm just over here like, hmm, interesting. What do you think? What do you think about aliens? Nah, I'm pretty, I mean, I'm open to the fact that there might be aliens, but I, it's kind of like other things. I really, like, I'm, unless it's, unless I can see it or it can be proven without a doubt, then kind of skeptical about it. Same thing with like, kind of, kind of the same thing with when it comes to like ghosts and spirits and stuff. Mm. It's like, unless I've seen it or unless I, there's like credible evidence of it i'm gonna be like okay cool that's you can believe that that's fine but i don't necessarily care one way or the other right kind of right. kind of right. apathetic towards it well it's kind of like i think we mentioned briefly when we were talking about supernatural beings i had put forth the idea that some alien interactions were actually different supernatural being interactions rather than alien interactions I still feel that way. Yeah. But I'm just, I do have I, to say, we just watched um, No End. I, I saw some reports that it wasn't that good. And I think the reason people were saying it wasn't that good is just because it's not like the other video or the other movies that um, Jordan, Peele. Jordan Peele has done. Um, and it's, it, they're not, it wasn't really a horror movie. It was more like a science fiction movie about, um, about an alien encounter. It was it was really good. I liked it. I think it it was done well. I enjoyed it. Do you have a favorite alien movie? Um, no, I'm not a. I mean, I, I like the movie Alien, right? The, the one with Sigourney Weaver and the Xenomorphs, and I like that that group of movies. But I mean, then I'll, obviously E. T. E. T. is a fun movie to watch. Yeah. <laughs> one of our schoolmates was terrified of E. T. A lot of people, my um co-worker Candy she hated that movie maybe her daughter I think it was her daughter actually was terrified of it I remember um when E.T. was first out and everything um my stepfather didn't want us to watch it because he said that E.T. was a demon and like maybe like the only reason that I got to see it was because my step-grandmother let us watch it (laughs) um small side note though Drew Barrymore, apparently, when she was in that movie, because she was such a little kid, she thought E.T. was real, like that he was alive. She was just listening to, like, her account of when she was a child. She may have also been drunk. I mean, yeah, but she was talking about it on her show. Like, she did a reunion with some of the cast from E.T. And um, apparently, Steven Spielberg made sure that, like, anytime that she went to go and talk to E.T. and check on him and whatnot because she would like insist on giving him like a scarf and whatnot because it got cold (laughs) and she didn't want him to be cold. Um, He apparently made sure that the puppeteers were always there so that E.T. could actually interact with her. Um, I really like her. She's, she's a really, no, she's a good actress, but she's also like a really good person too. Yeah, I agree. She, um, Nick and I were recently watching Ever After because <sighs> I haven't seen it in years oh. so we were like oh let's rewatch this if you're listening and you have never seen Ever After you have to watch it it's, it's one so of my good. favorite movies ever it's so good I had forgotten how good it was actually it's like Ever After is it a Cinderella story is that what it's called I think so the subtitle such a good movie i love it and the only reason i um yeah ever after a cinderella story and it's the very first movie i ever got on vhs wow i I got it as a uh, christmas present at one of my dad's businesses christmas parties like you would go and pick a present and i picked it and unwrapped it and they were like oh that's that's supposed to be for a girl i was like it's mine. Don't touch it. Get away from me. You're like, uh, no gender roles here. This is mine. <laughs> like, this is my present. You touch it, you're gonna lose that hand. <laughs> I'm just picturing you as a little kid being like, no. <laughs> I I was a, 
pretty strong little kid. Not strong, but like strong-willed little kid. Like, I, I think I remember, I think I've told you this story before when I was little, we, um, my brother and I, my mom insisted that we played baseball and I hated baseball and I never wanted to play, but we had to do it because she wanted to. Right. <clears throat> and every time I would get up to bat, it was when the coach of your team would pitch for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And every time I got up to bat, he would hit me with the ball. I don't know why, but every single time he would. And then like the very last time I ever played baseball in like that type of setting that wasn't gym, he hit me with the ball and it busted open my pinky finger on my right hand, like so much that it was bleeding. Oh and, no. And I threw the bat down, ran to the little dugout area and my parents came and I said, I don't want to play this damn game anyways. <laughs> and my dad t took me out and he said, he's not going to play this game anymore. That's fair. That's reasonable. I got lucky and my asthma prevented my mother from forcing me into any sports. Like that was not a thing. Um, but anyway, go, going back to aliens. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what states have the highest number of reports? I bet it's the East Coast one. A lot of them are. Well, most of them are East Coast or Central. Yeah, I know a lot of um, like Pennsylvania had a lot of sightings, I feel like. Um, West Virginia, I know, has had a few. Um, no. I've, li it's I've listed the top 10. Okay. So uh, 10 at 2,273 sightings. Uh, it's North Carolina. Okay. Most, re most recent sighting was in 2015 in Faff Town, I'm assuming. P F A F F Town. I mean, that's, that's how that would work for me. <laughs> and then Michigan is number nine with 2,451 sightings. And their most recent one is also March 2015. Hmm. Oh, this one. How old is this report? Oh, it's because it's from March. It's from 2015. Okay. That oh, makes sense. Okay. So they're all from 2015 and in March. So that makes sense. Uh, number eight is Ohio with 2,907. And then Pennsylvania is number seven with 3,142. Arizona is six with 3,212. New York is fifth with 3,837. Texas, where Sarah is living, is fourth with 4,359. And then Washington is third with 5,400. Florida is second with 5,113. And what do you think the number one is? Hmm. I don't, I don't know. It's not very, it's not very helpful. First of all, you should know that I hate guessing things because I always am scared I'm gonna get it super wrong. Secondly, um, I got distracted about the Texas. So I'm over here like, okay, wait, what did he say after that? Texas and Washington. Texas has 4,359 sightings okay. as of April, 2015. So I'm sure it's more than that now. No, probably. Uh, Florida or Washington, 5,004. Florida, 5,113. And California. California, hmm. With 11,202, which makes sense because California has a lot of people in it anyways. Right. So I pulled up a map of UFO sightings um, mm -hmm. with Arcgis, A-R-C-G-I-S, um, like looking at Texas. And it looks like the majority of sightings happened around big cities. So like Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, Austin, where I'm at, and San Antonio, though fewer in San Antonio. Hmm. And I'm like scooching in, looking at this map, and it looks like there was one sighting, two bright objects that remain stationary, um, have been appearing every night for the past couple of weeks, but it doesn't give me a date on that, um, in Round Rock, which is where I'm at. So um, there are seven bright, reddish orange orbs seen flying in a row and then three fading lights in the sky so there were three in in round rock and there were 12 and 
Austin proper. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is it doesn't really give any dates. It just like gives the description. Hmm. So it's it's pretty interesting though. Um, looking at the the spread as far as um, sightings go in the United States. Yeah, it's pretty pretty far across. I wonder. I haven't looked at anything from outside of the United States. So like UFO sightings outside of the United States. Right. I'm sure that like, I know that there are instances outside of the United States, but, but I think primarily I just hear about the ones here. Yeah. Ooh, let's go to, let's go to Indiana. Let's see if there's any, oh, any in Bloomington. One sighting. It was oh. a triangle shaped orange craft and had no sound. In Bloomington? That's what it says. But again, these don't have any dates on them. Primarily Indianapolis is the hot spot, which makes sense since it appears that a lot of these are from like well-populated areas. So like bigger cities, which I'm not sure if that creates more credibility for me or less credibility. <laughs> because like on the one hand, I guess, you know, the more populated the area, the more likely a lot of people saw it rather than just, you know, one or two people but then on the other hand if you're in a bigger city how are you going to really be able to distinguish you know whether those lights are coming from like an airplane for example also there's the argument of the um crowd mentality where someone is hesitant to speak up against the crowd yeah so if there's a bunch of people that are saying they saw the same thing there's more there's less 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 of a chance that someone's going to come up and say no that's not what happened right because then they're gonna just go with whatever the other person was saying because yeah. they they don't want to look like an outsider I don't oh know. this is from 2022 and it's still it's still pretty similar so 10 is michigan nine is illinois eight is ohio seven is arizona six is pennsylvania five is new york four is texas three is washington two is Florida, and one is California, so. Hmm. Interesting. Rhode Island, where does Rhode Island fall? It's 46, with 577 sightings in, oh, it just says sightings. In the last five years, though, Connecticut has had the, uh, well, no, this isn't, oh, per 100 people, okay. Most sightings per 100,000 people, so. Connecticut's 568, Washington is 1,297, Wyoming is 99, uh, Oregon 756, Michi nope, not Michigan, Maine is 247, uh, New Mexico 30 391, Vermont 1 132, uh, Montana 223, New Hampshire 313, and then Idaho at 420. Um, anyways, you want to take a quick break and then we'll come back and we'll talk about movies with aliens or about aliens. Yeah. Because I have a list of 31 best alien movies ever to watch for a far out experience. Oh, we can see how many of them we've seen. Yeah, from uh, Yahoo Entertainment. And it's from October 2022. There we go. So we'll take a quick break and we move back. Bye. Bye. All right, and we are back. All right, so we're going to take a look at this list from Yahoo Entertainment um, on the 31 best alien movies ever to watch for a far out experience written by Randy Dawn. A odd name. Um, and then the first one they have on this list is The Day the Earth Stood Still from 1951, which I have never actually seen. I don't think I've seen it either. I've, I like remember hearing about it, but I don't think I've actually seen it. I, I don't even think I've seen the newer one with, um, what's his face? Tom Cruise. Is that who's in it? Mm, I don't know. But I, I definitely haven't watched any Tom Cruise movies in a while. <laughs> oh, uh, Keanu Reeves. Sorry. So I know that's really not even close to the same person, but there was a movie that Tom Cruise was in that had something to do with aliens. Uh, World, uh. War no. of the Worlds. Yeah. War of the Worlds. That's what it was. Um, Okay. Uh, so there's just a little snippet of what The Day the Earth Stood Still from 1951 is. So this classical un this classic unspools like an extended episode of Twilight Zone. At the movie's heart, the question, <clears throat> what if it turns out we're not the most intelligent or powerful species out there? 
what if we were perceived as warring troublemakers? That's what seems to be the case when a spaceship arrives in Washington, D.C. with a message from the people of Earth, or to the people, for the people of Earth, get along or get wiped out. To see the premise play out in modern context, check out the inferior, and this is their works, not mine, 2008 remake with Keanu Reeves. I don't think I've seen that one either. I definitely haven't seen that one. And then The Man Who Fell to Earth from 1976. The man, in quotes, who visits Earth is this trippy, um, wow, I don't even know what this word is. Can you spell it? Langorous? L-A-N-G-U-R-O-U-S. I've always Lang- pronounced it Langorious, but I don't know if that's right. It's one of those words that I've always, I've read it, but I've never said it out loud. Uh, let's see. Continue, whatever. Moving on. Uh, Langorous. Characterized by, by tiredness or inactivity, especially of a pleasurable kind. Hmm. So, anyways... Uh, and this trippy, languorous film is played by David. So the, the man is played by David Bowie. And that's enough for most people to check it out. Um, it's a tragic tale of an alien who just wants to bring water to his drought-stricken planet and insist, instead gets sidetracked by all two human vices. Mm. And there is a new version of the story starring Shibatel Ejiofor. Oh, I know who that is. I do not. So there you go. He was in um <clears throat> he was in a movie with Julia Roberts that I really liked. Um I think it doo, 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 doo. I have to go I have to go look now. Um I think it was um their eyes were closed or something like that. It's something to do with closed eyes. Hold on. Bird box? No, no, that's, that's, not, that's Julia Roberts anyways. Or not Sandra Bullock. Secret in their eyes. Nicole Kidman's also in it. It's a, pretty, it's a pretty good movie. It's a pretty good movie. Um, but no, I have not seen The Man Who Fell to Earth. Neither have I. Um, and then the next one on the list is Star Wars from 1977. Of course. I think, I think everybody knows Star Wars, so I'm not going to bother reading the little insert about it. <clears throat> Invasion of the Body Snatchers from 1978. I've seen snippets, but I've not seen the whole thing. I've never seen the entire... I've never seen this movie either. I, I don't know. Uh, if you were concerned about the scare factor in this 1978 remake, you could always go back to the original 1956 original, a pitch perfect riff of the McCarthyism unfolding. Uh, but we prefer the glit- glit- grittier, star studded remake with Donald Sutherland, Jeff Goldblum, and Leonard, Leonard no- Nimoy. Wow, that was, I stuttered through that name. Uh, for the real alien touch. In some, a gooey race of aliens move to Earth after their planet proves un- unlivable and take over human bodies at a time. One human body at a time, turning them into emotionless pod people. Uh, we are the we are all aliens in the end to one another. <laughs> the only thing I've seen in this movie is at the end where it turns out that Donald Sutherland uh, is transformed into an alien. Spoilers. I mean, if it's all over the internet, so if anyone hasn't seen it, where have you been on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> the next one on this list is Close Encounters of the Third Kind from 1977. I'm not going to read through all of these because there's 31 and that would take forever. Right. Uh, and then Superman the movie from 1978. Alien, which we already talked about and is a pretty good alien movie uh, from 1979. Agreed. E.T. we also talked about. Or E.T. the Extraterrestrial, which is the entire name of the movie. I don't think anyone calls it that. I don't think anyone calls it that either. 1982. Starman. 1982? That's what it says. Dang. That's older than my sister. Yeah, that's older than me. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, And then Starman from 1984. Uh, You gotta give the Starman Jeff Bridges credit. He really tries to fit in on Earth during his first visit. He assumes the body of a deceased loved one, uh, freaking out the loved one's wife, Karen Karen Allen. Goes on a classic road trip to send a message that he needs to needs a pickup to get home. Wins the lottery and has just enough of a relationship with Allen's character to get her a baby. That's really weird. I've seen that that one. I've seen snippets of um, because my mom really liked that movie. So like I know quotes from it but i've never seen the whole thing i don't think i've ever even heard of it 
<clears throat> um, and then the next one is Enemy Mine from 1985. I've never heard of this one. That doesn't sound familiar to me either. Dick and Dito's admit that Enemy Mine is not a great movie, but it's an excellent portrayal of a human and an alien. Dennis Quaid and Louis Gossett Jr. Oh, Louis Gossett Jr. Louis Gossett Jr. Trying to work together. And he's correct. When the two species are marooned on a planet, they first try to kill each other, then learn both mutual respect and brotherhood while fighting for uh, survival and later family. Hmm. And then 1986 Aliens. So the second um, installment in the Alien franchise. Uh, Predator from 1987. Spaceballs from 1987. I love Spaceballs. Have you seen, you've seen Predator though too, right? No, I haven't seen Predator. Oh, you've never seen Predator? No. I've There's... seen the original Alien, but I've not seen Predator. Have you seen the second Alien? Aliens? I saw, um, what was it? I watched an Alien movie or a Predator movie. I don't remember which one it was. Um, I mean, there's one where they cross over and it's Alien versus Predator. It wasn't that one. With um, Horus, but I don't remember what the name of it was. Is it Prometheus? No. Was no. it an, a newer movie or an older movie? I feel like it was newer. Um, Topher Grace is in it. Hold on. Let me look. So there are some that just recently came out that kind of relaunched the Alien franchise. Prometheus. I can't remember what the other one is. Predators is the one that I saw. Oh, okay. Then yeah, this it's not the Aliens movie. But they, I mean, they basically tied them together and the predators fought the aliens yeah they were, they were developed and um changed to fight the aliens mm -hmm. uh next one space balls from 1987 have you ever seen space balls yes i have seen space balls i can i can quote it <laughs> i don't think i've ever seen it fully i think i watched parts of it and then that's it uh mars attacks from 1996 Oh my God. Hilarious movie. Yes. It's um, been literally ages since I saw it, but yes, I've seen that one. Star Trek First Contact from 1996. Yes. <sighs> Contact, one of Katya's favorites from 1997. <laughs> mm. Men in Black, also from 1997. Yes, I've seen all the Men in Black, except for the newest one. Have you seen Contact? Uh, I think I've seen most of it. I don't feel like I've seen the whole thing though. It's a pretty good movie. Dark City from 1998. I just recently watched this. It's not bad. Galaxy Quest from 19... That was in 1999. I didn't know it was that old. Yeah, Galaxy Quest is old, old. Ah, the 90s. <laughs> Pitch Black from 2000 with Vin Diesel. Which I haven't seen, but everybody's told me that I should see. I think I've seen it, but I don't remember it. So it wasn't something I particularly cared for. Mm-hmm. Lilo and Stitch from 2002. It, yes. <laughs> taking, taking a very big turn. Um, Signs also from 2002. Which, yes, I've, I've seen Signs, and I believe I saw that with you and Ryan. I'm sure we watched it, yeah. Lither from 2006. No, I haven't seen that one. Um, it's I've seen it. It's kind of an interesting movie. Avatar, I have not seen, and I, I refuse to watch. I actually, I saw Avatar, and like, yeah, it wasn't great. But it wasn't bad for what it was. Like, I enjoyed it. It's insane. And it's also, they're coming out with another one, too. Yes, they are They are coming out with another one. Um, and then Attack the Block from 2011. Haven't seen that one. Neither have I. I've heard of it, though, before. It's set in South London. Uh, the World's End End in 2013 with Simon Pegg. <laughs> I haven't seen that, but I love Simon Pegg, so I would watch it. I don't think I've seen it, but I've seen clips of it. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy from 2014. Seen it. I've never seen it. I'm not a huge Marvel DC person. That's fair. I enjoyed it. Eh. It doesn't Edge. feel like a Marvel movie, honestly, to me. Yeah. But... Um, Edge of Tomorrow from 2014. I have never seen that, and you wouldn't have seen it because it has Tom Cruise in it. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it. Now, back in the day... If that had been something that was back in the 90s, I would have seen it because I loved Tom Cruise back in the 90s. Arrival from 2016. It's a good movie with <laughs> Amy Adams. Yes, I think I watched that with you and um, Ryan. Potentially. 
probably. Or at least some of it. I know I've seen some of it. Yeah. Uh, Suicide Squad from 2021. Suicide Squad? Really? We're counting that as an alien movie? Apparently. Um, from the guy behind Guardians of the Galaxy, a director James Gunn, comes another darkly funny adventure that involves humans and aliens on both sides of the hero-villain divide. Based on DC Comics characters, a ragtag team of questionably moral individuals with powers is conscripted into destroying a giant alien starfish called Starro the Conqueror. Needless to say, there's A, more to the story of both Starro and how it got to Earth, and B, a whole lot of carnage to come. While the movie has some of the same characters as featured in 2016's Suicide Squad, it's not the same story. So it's not the same one as the 2016 version. Okay. Um, I was very confused for a second there. Like, And then the last one on here is Dune from 2021. I'm surprised. What is that movie called? It's like Project 91 or something like that. I don't know. That doesn't sound familiar to me. No, that's not what it's called. Uh, what is it called? Because it is an alien movie. I'm surprised it like War of the Worlds. Um, was it on there? Yeah, I'm surprised there's a lot of movies that aren't on here. Like, there's a lot of alien movies I feel like they missed out on. And I just genuinely don't feel like, I don't feel like Guardians of the Galaxy and, you know, Lilo and Stitch should really count. Like, yeah, they involve aliens, but that's not really what people think of when they think of alien movies. Or maybe that's just me being being biased for no reason. Maybe. Possibly. Oh, there's also... Oh, here's um from Collider. 13 best alien horror movies for extraterrestrial t- terror. First one on the list is A Quiet Place from 2018, which was a pretty good scary movie. That was a really good movie. We went and saw that in theaters. You, me, Ryan, and someone who shall go unnamed. I don't Think about who was glued to my side. Oh, your your buddy. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Nope from this year, 2022. Fresh out of the oven, Jordan Peele's Nope is simultaneously one thrilling western and a unique horror movie about aliens. Just like Peele's previous movies Get Out and Us, Nope has a rich subtext that is discussing the predatory nature of Hollywood. However, the way Peele materializes the Hollywood Hollywood monster makes this most most interesting movie uh, makes the most this the most interesting movie from the horror master. Nope's alien is a giant eye that sucks people. Oh, I'm gonna stop reading from there because yeah, no spoilers. It kind of does give some things away. Um, Slither from 2006, which we already talked about. Cloverfield from 2008. Cloverfield was a pretty crazy movie. I didn't. I like have it not the, seen it. I didn't like it the first time I watched it, but after I watched it a second time. I still didn't love it, but it wasn't as bad. And then they also have like Cloverfield 2 or what it's called. Um, and then Tin Cloverfield Lane. And there was another one that just recently came out and I don't remember what it was called. Right. Now. Uh, the Cloverfield Paradox from 2018, which wasn't a terrible movie. It wasn't a great movie either. Yeah, um, isn't. More on this list, Attack the Block, which we talked about, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, The Thing. I'm surprised that wasn't on that list either. Mm-hmm. From 1982. Honeymoon from 2014. I've never even heard of this movie. I haven't either. Alien from 1979. Under the Skin from 2013 with Scarlett Johansson. I um, haven't seen that, but I also don't really like Scarlett Johansson. Annihilation. Have you seen this movie? It was from 2018. I don't think so. Is this what I'm thinking of? It doesn't have that she's in here. Some people love Alex Garland. Some people are not so fond of his psychedelic filmmaking style. But everyone must agree that Garland knows how to put a put on a spectacle. Based on a novel by Jeff Vandermeer, Annihilation follows a group of explorers entering the Shimmer, a quarantine zone where nature began to change due to the influence of a mysterious alien presence. Uh, what makes Annihilation... Yeah, this is the one that I'm thinking of. Um, it has... Uh, I always get them mixed up. Um, oh my gosh, what is her name? Let me look it up. <laughs> oh, I always get... it. It's not the girl that's in... Um, oh, I can't even think of the name now. Wow, I cannot spell. Natalie Portman. Aw, I love Natalie Portman. I always get her and um, the girl that is in, oh my gosh, what is that movie? She has a daughter named Americus. That is Natalie Portman. Is that Natalie Portman? Yeah, and it's where the heart is. 
Yes. Wait. Yes. You're right. And who's the other one I always get her mixed up with? I don't know. I can't think of it. Moving on, though. Uh, Prey from 2022, which I've never... I don't know that I've heard of this. I've heard of it. I have not seen it. I saw another movie called Prey. Um, P-R-A-Y. This, um, yeah. That's how this one's spelled. Wait, no, B R E Y. Um, the one that I saw was a Japanese horror film, though, and did not have to do with aliens. I think this is a Japanese horror film. Yeah? No, maybe not. Um, Pitch Black from 2000, right, and that's the last one on this list. The list. Yeah. So those are some some fun movies to watch if you're into um, alien movies. Alien movies, yeah. Who is the one that I'm thinking of that looks? I I always get her and Natalie Portman mixed up. Kira Knightley. Yes, that's who it is. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't know why I get them mixed up, but I always do. Um, they were both in um the prequel movies of Star Wars. Um, and with the makeup on, their own mothers couldn't tell them apart. So hmm, interesting. Okay. All right. So you want to wrap it up with a quiz or a couple of questions from quizzes? Sure. Sarah's favorite thing. These Sarah's should be favorite. easy though. Uh, what does UFO stand for? An identified flying object. Yeah. Um, an identified an an unidentified flying object is what? A UFO. <laughs> yeah, but it says any perceived aerial phenomenon that cannot be immediately identified or explained. Mm. On investigation, most UFOs are identified as known objects or atmospheric phenomena, while a smaller number remain what? Unidentified. <laughs> close it's unexplained but yeah <laughs> basically uh while unu while unusual sightings have been reported in the sky throughout history ufos did not achieve their current cultural phenomenon until when we talked a little bit about it earlier or i did right um when the roswell thing happened so the that was the 70s right well it just says after uh world war ii oh well you know so yeah so yeah i'm technically correct <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the 20th century saw studies and investigations into UFO reports conducted by whom? Uh, wait, repeat the question. The 20th century saw studies and investigations into UFO reports conducted by whom? The U.S. government? Yeah, governments and governments well as by organizations and individuals. So everybody basically is the answer to that question. <laughs> everybody wanted to wanted to know what was up. Yeah, uh, people have observed the sky throughout history and s have sometimes seen unusual sights, such as what? Some really weird questions. Yeah, I feel like all of them have the same answer almost. Kind of. I mean, this one is comets, bright meteors, one or more of the five planets that can be readily seen with the naked eye, planetary conjunctions, and atmospheric op optical phenomena such as uh, Paralia and lenticular clouds. Wow. Uh, one particular famous example is Halley's Comet, recorded first by whom? Halley? <laughs> I mean, kind of, yeah. I think the main person that saw it, saw it was, their last name was Halley, yeah. Uh, Chinese astronomers in 204 BC and possibly as early as 467 BC. Mm. <clears throat> As it reaches the inner solar system every 76 years, it was often identified as a what? Halley's Comet. This is, these are dumb. I'm done with this one. We're moving on. Okay. All right. Uh, I was just remembering seeing Halley's Comet when I was a kid. Really? I think so. I think it passed through during the 90s. Hmm. Five years after the infamous Battle of Los Angeles, this new Mexico town became the number one locale for... Uh, for UFOs after it was reported that aliens were picked up there and transported to Area 51. Roswell, New Mexico. Yep, Roswell. This one's easier. <laughs> and the questions make sense. Uh, what was the name of the book about an alien encounter that Orson Welles adapted for radio so well that according to legend, he scared the East Coast of the U.S. into thinking an attack was underway. War of the Worlds. Yeah, War of the Worlds. Um, in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, a family alleged allegedly had a terrifying late night fight with extraterrestrials, which lasted until dawn. Those who remain skeptical about the encounter think the farm encountered what nocturnal raptor. That last one kind of gives it away. Nocturnal raptor. <laughs> the, the face you're giving me is, is not assisting. Who? Um, I don't know. Oh my god, I just basically gave you a hint. 
I know. Who? Who? Like nocturnal raptor? Yes, nocturnal raptors go. Who? <laughs> An owl, yes. Uh, while serving as governor of Georgia, this former U.S. president claimed to have witnessed a UFO in the skies over Leary in 1969. Hmm. We have the first name, but I don't go by his name. Ryan? No, that's not his Jimmy first name. Jimmy Carter. Yes. Every time. <laughs> Every time. My first name is not Ryan. I, I know, but that's what I call you. <laughs> Multiple encounters with alien craft was were reported in uh, Rendlesham Forest. Sure, um, in the early 1980s, making the incident one of the most famous international encounters in what country? In the forest, what country is the forest located? Rendlesham Forest. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's England. Mm. So diverting from that just really quick because I had to look up to see whether or not it was actually Haley's comet that I saw. And it was the Hale Bop comet that reached its closest approach to the planet in 1997. Mm. It was a thousand times brighter than Haley's comet. Hmm. You should know the answer to this next question because we talked about it earlier. A private pilot they named Kenneth Arnold was flying near Mount Rainier when he saw nine shining object objects rocket by super speed by at super speed what popular term for ufos was coined in response to his sighting flying saucer there you go look at that she Yay. listens sometimes she sometimes <laughs> listens when i talk sometimes i get distracted because you'll say something interesting and then i'll go to look something up related to it and then i'll completely space whatever you were saying <laughs> um this arizona town was rocketed in no, no, sorry. It was rocked in March 1997 by mass sightings of lights flying through the sky, almost famously in a V-shape. Town in Arizona. Town in Arizona. I feel like I know this. Starts with a P. Starts with a P. Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. In 1987, Arthur Whiteley Stiber wrote of his purported close encounter with aliens. This book was later successfully adapted into a film with Christopher Walken starring as the author and codified the ideas of the greys. What was the book called? What was the book called? Um, I don't know that you'll know this. Uh, like my encounter with aliens or like? No, it's called communion. Communion? No. Communion oh. thing we did in church. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Um, formed in the mid-1990s, this rock band shares its name with the term for ghostly UFOs seen by pilots during World War II over the skies of the Pacific and European theaters. Well, see, now we know, because now we, we were know. talking about it earlier, the Foo Fighters. Yeah, there you go. Uh, what color are the fireballs that have been seen rocketing through the airspace of military bases since 1950s? Orange? You would think. They're in my background. Green? Green. There you go. He's got Aurora Borealis behind him. <laughs> um, anyways, that's all I got. Interesting. What do you have going on the rest of the weekend? Um, I am... Let's see. I'm going to karaoke tonight with Nick. Um, And then I have papers I have to write this week. And an oral history interview that I have to do. But I have no idea who I'm going to do it with. <laughs> oh, that's... Oh, I'm so mad. So I looked at my next term. Um, And every week we have a group a team assignment. Mm. I hate team assignments. I also hate team assignments. They're the worst. I'm just like, okay, I get it. I understand like the the sociological benefits of it, but like, I don't. Come on, human interaction is supposed to be good for you. I interact with humans all the time. That's called work. <laughs> I don't want to do it through my school. <laughs> Screw that. That's why I take online classes so I don't have to deal with other people. I mean, hashtag same. Um. Anyways. That's all I got. Um, I don't really have much planned this weekend. Bobo's standing next to me like he wants to go out. Mm, so Yeah, it oh. is that time. Yeah, which he's been asleep for a while. There we go. So we will call that a day. Um, thank you for listening. For those of you that are, if you would like to, please like, comment, share, subscribe, um, and leave us a review if you liked it. If you didn't like it, piss off. We don't care. Um, other than that, we hope you have a great week if you're listening to this on Monday, because that's when that will come out. Um, Sarah, have a good weekend. You as well. If you would like to, you can follow us on our social media. We are at or on Instagram 
and our handle is at now about that pod and if there's something specific you would like for us to talk about on the podcast you can email us um, at gmail um, at now about that pod at gmail.com um other than that have a good rest of your week everybody and we will talk to you in the next one yeah bye, later. bye. Oh, 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 oh,